All right, so now that you understand the problem and the notation, let's focus on the implementation. We are going to, in this part of the video, I'm going to start reading the template and I'll do some minor changes in the template and I'll start implementing this, uh, this step, the initialization, that's when we reset our component here, and the first update. The reason is that the first update is distinct from all the future updates in the sense that the first update does not have uh, the requirements of adjacency that we will have in the other updates. So let's remember, these are grid. This is the way we're going to store our, our positions. So let's go to our template. Um, we have our code. Most uh, the helper functions you have to, to write is part of the exercise. So let's think here how we start this. Let's we have two blocks. We have this big block here. If we set, and this is just a small trick that I do, L if private list and locals. I'm just asking like uh, if I created a private list, it should be in the local variable. So it only runs this uh, this second part here if this is in locals. But that as this is an elif uh, statement it means that if reset, I run this. If it's not reset, it will check if I have private listing locals and then we run. It will, it will avoid errors when I run the second part without initializing. Okay, other things we can do. I'm repeating code in my template. I don't need this repeated code. This is just when I transfer things for Grasshopper. So let's say step one, step two, step three, step Four. Now the template looks much better, and the step four can be, I mean, this can be here, okay? Now let's see what's happening in this block. We initialize our variables. This is done. We have an empty set for those who, uh, we have an empty set. This is a, in the beginning, all the cells are going to be in the empty set. We have a private set that in the beginning is empty, public list empty, private list empty, public frontier is an empty set. Okay, let's do our first update. To do the first update, we can choose any cell to have our, we can start with the public or private space, so we can choose any cell on our grid. Let's say this is our public space, and then we can choose the private space to be one of the adjacent cells, okay? So let's implement that function. First update settlement, empty set. First update settlement, there is a, something that doesn't exist here. We have an empty set and it should return a tuple with tuples, or this can be a list if you prefer. Let's say a list or tuple containing two tuples because each position is a tuple. So how let's start with public position how do we sample our public position from an empty grid when i mean an empty grid from an empty set that contains all the cells from the grid well one way we can do this we can say public position equals random what's the function that we use to sample well you can check in the documentation but basically uh, we have a function that's called sample and the, it has like two arguments first the set or the list we are trying to sample here in our case is empty set and we have one sample however this function uh, returns let's see here oh it doesn't return a new list containing elements so you have a list with one element we don't need the list we can only extract that element from the list using index zero or using pop. So this is basically sampling a position from our, our grid for our empty set. Now, however, let's say that I, I sampled this position to be my first public space here. Can I sample this private position from the grid? In yes and no. Yes, in the sense that yes, I should sample uh, cells in the grid, but no, because now we have a restriction. If this is my public position, my private positions can only be the neighbors. So I should actually restrict. I can I can find like a subset of the grid and sample from this subset. So how do we do that? So we can divide into problems. Problem one: extract uh, neighbors of 
public position and more than that extract neighbors from public position extract uh, neighbors let's say neighbors in empty set why do I need this well why do I need this is because maybe I don't want to get neighbors that are outside of the grid and for not for this but for the future updates you might also think about neighbors that are not occupied but for now let's only think about these two problems problem one let's extract neighbors from a public position uh, we can do this in a different function let's say neighbors equal let's create our well, we have our function here get for neighbors of type um, let's use that actually this is the solution for both problems so uh, I will put it here so we get for neighbors of type it means that we are going to try to get for neighbors that name the name is not the best one but it should be only get neighbors when I say okay I'll keep it for when I say get four neighbors that it's actually I'm only trying to get the neighbors in the four positions not from the eight uh, the, the neighborhood of eight cells only from four cells so let's keep this way and let's call this neighbors equals this we should get the neighbors in the empty set okay now we need to implement this function get for neighbors of type so we break the problem and the problem here is much simpler. First of all, I need to find uh, the neighbors of, before finding the neighbors of type, I can just get neighbors. Let's say all neighbors, all four neighbors. How do I find this? Simple, we can create a list. Let's say that we're going to check in this order. Up, let's say top, down, left, right to do that I can have vectors that are going to help me so I'm storing tuples uh, starting positions as tuples I can store like these vectors as tuples too let's say top considering our notation top means minus one in the J so J is the second so top zero minus one bottom zero one left is minus one zero right is one zero okay so these are the vectors I'm going to add and now I can get like all yeah all four neighbors I can use this comprehension here I can say well I have my position the tuple that I'm going to create every tuple in this list is going to be a sum a kind of a sum between my position and the one of these vectors so say D instead of this so let's say the coordinate 0 plus the D 0 1 plus D 1 you can say, well, I'm adding the first coordinate of position with the first coordinate of our vector of change here, and the same for the second coordinate. However, what's D? D doesn't exist now. I need to, I, this is just a name that I'm using my comprehension, so I can say for D in this. So now D is going to be like every element, each element of this list is going to be in D. And now I create a new list. These are all four neighbors. The second test, that I can do actually I could solve here I could say well I could solve it here with a conditional but we are going to do in two parts we're breaking the problem let's say all legal neighbors if this doesn't look we can use underline all legal neighbors and basically we can say oh, this is all neighbors all legal neighbors I can use another list comprehension and I can say, well, I'll take every neighbor for n in all n's. Now I have a condition. If n belongs to, if it's contained by our type set. Okay. And now I just return all legal neighbors. So I have two steps of the problem here. Step one is the one that I'm getting all the four neighbors and I don't know if they exist they are outside of the grid they're inside of the grid or not I'm just getting the four neighbors and step two I'm filtering the four neighbors and only getting the cells that are in our type set in the argument so let's say that we have another function that does like this first step 
these other functions here, get for neighbors. I can just copy. And now I can return, actually I can return all ends. Positions here, yeah, everything is correct. And I can use this to extract all neighbors. So in this one, I can use in type set, I can even put it here with n and get all neighbors position. Now it looks good. And even it, it's even readable. N for n and get for neighbors if n in type set. Return all legal neighbors. See one function with two lines. Actually it could be only one line if you wanted. Another function with three lines, we could also do this in one line. We just uh, compose one line with everything here. And now we got the, f uh, the neighbors. Let's go back to our function. Uh, first update. So it passed my function. First update settlement. Now we can get for neighbors type position empty set. And now we can sample our private position from instead of sampling from empty set. We are going to sample from our legal neighbors. Uh, just to look, sound better. These are legal neighbors. And I'll sample from legal neighbors. And I'll pop. Now I have public and private, uh, private position. Return. I'm going to return both of them. Okay. Uh, this function is done. Now let's see, we're returning, let's test. It might break, sometimes, yes. Uh, line 154, I forgot to do something here. Private and locals, 154, there's an unexpected token. Update the settlement and all the variables. Somehow, I probably forgot, yes, I forgot this here. Test. Okay, private list is not defined. That's good. We need to restart to define it. Uh, global name positions not defined in line 147, uh, calling 86. Position, where is our position? It's actually public position. Let's test again. Running. Good. So let's just print. Let's see after we find. Let's print here public and private positions to see if they are feasible. So you can print it here. Well, that's something. Oh, yeah, in this version, I still have the grid larger than. Let's reduce it like I did in the previous video. I'll reduce to size 4. And I, uh, I'll set it to. And I'll also add. I like to add a random seed just to make sure my I always repeat the same results when I run it in my code multiple times. So two three 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 that's good. Let's visualize what does it mean. Two three 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 means that zero one two. So two three three three. Let's draw it there. Zero one two. 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is going to be, I think, our public space first. And 3, 3 is going to be here, and this is going to be our private space. And this is the first time we are uh, we are doing, so I'll just add a 0 here, right? Okay. And that's good. So this is our first update. And what else do we need to do here? After the first update, we need to update our data. I will do this in the next video.